and welcome to Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment in Canada around the world. My name is Tahir I. Qureshi. I'm your host. I'm a fellow of Rural Institute of Canada, real estate broker of record, facility for Realty Inc. brokerage. Today is Remembrance Day. Remembrance is a memorial day covered by Canadian and all others of the Commonwealth since the end of First War, World War in order to remember all those who have fought and died in the line of duty to keep us free. Every year on November 11, Canadian pause in a moment of silence to honor and remember more than two million Canadians who have observed and continue to serve Canada during times of war, conflict, and peace. If we don't remember, their sacrifice is meaningless. Let's not forget. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about down payment, importance of down payment. As you can see, based off market condition that we have shared with you on real estate, affordability has been issue, and the biggest challenge that we have is for the first time home buyer who are trying to enter in the marketplace. So when they are looking for a house to buy a property, they meet realtors. They put together a budget, what they can buy. The main important thing that comes to it for a deposit, and just to make sure you understand what the deposit is and what the down payment is, and how you can get the down payment, and how you can save your money. So. Buying, especially young Canadian, buying the property requires a significant amount of down payment. And unless you have a responsible saving practices, you're not going to have down payment uh, to put down when you are buying a, a property. So it's very important that, uh, that you have to plan it accordingly. So when you are ready to buy a property or you're thinking that you are ready to buy a property that is come to you is that how much can I afford? So you talk to the mortgage broker or an agent or a lender and then you look at the affordability. And then especially as I'm a principal broker of Canada Express Mortgage Inc. License 13241, we ask, there is a requirement under MBLLA Know your client. That means I need to know your financial condition in which you are going to apply for a loan to get a lender to give you the money. So what is the major component? Let's assume you got a realtor, you, you're ready to buy a property, you have chosen a property. The main important thing is how much can you afford? And this is, and then that's affordability issue. Okay, you qualify for a mortgage, but where is the down payment coming from? And this is why we're going to talk about the down payment, importance of down payment. So there is a deposit when you enter into an agreement of purchase and sale, you put an offer. If your office is accepted as a condition subject to mortgage, and as you know, I'm a real estate broker of record, so I know real estate and the mortgage both sides. So when you are putting an agreement uh, offer, which is accepted, you have to give a deposit. Deposit amount is agreement between buyer and seller, whatever amount uh, they put in. And mostly likely, now I have seen on MLS system, people are demanding 5% down payment. And that's what 5% is required in order for new buyer to go to uh, CMAC to get a loan approval because when you fall into a risk insurance mortgage, that means you are paying less than 20%. You need to go to CMAC to get your mortgage approved. That's another step that you have to do. If you are a conventional buyer and you go to over 20%, you don't need that. Bank will do the appraisal. They will review your, your credentials, your asset, your income, your uh, liabilities, and they come up with uh, your uh, capability. Uh, what can you afford? And then you can do that. You can also do that on our website. If you go to citypro.net, city-pro.net, city, city and there is a home, home buying tips and selling tips, and there is a calculator when you drop the menu, and you can calculate and budget yourself. You can create your own budget. So biggest thing is, 
what is your strategy? So you need a down payment. Let's put you put the deposit down, and you told the agent this is what happened. One of the transaction, uh, our listing brokerage, I was dealing with it a few years back in 2018. The the money was coming out of the country. I'm not going to name the country because it's be recognized. So they say, oh, the agent who represented the buyer, he said, oh, money is coming from overseas. So after going through the, the down payment, they put the deposit, 15000 then another 10000 But they could not come up with the balance of the down payment to close uh, the, uh, the file with the bank because bank said you need to put so much money down and they could not produce that because the money did not come from overseas. So that means if you have a plan, and then at the end, after three years, the buyer has forfeited and I did, gave that money to the seller after getting a mutual release, after going through the court for three, three, three years. So at the end, the buyer has to forfeit the deposit because he, he or she, both of them did not close the deal. Twice they were given time extension. So that down payment is very important. That means you can make a deal by giving five, ten, twenty thousand dollar deposit, but the really the contract you're signing for is a now an average of a, a even a I'm looking at a townhome. I'm going to look at the a average price of a condo apartment in Toronto is seven hundred thirty thirty nine thousand six forty seven, and nine oh five is a six thirty four thousand. So that means if you put five percent down. And you can come up with that five percent, then you got a problem in your hand. So that is not to negotiate a deal with a deposit. It is important to make sure you have a down payment. And those sources of down payments are why it is important because it will determine the mortgage. The more the money you put in, the bank will give you a better deal because they have to take less risk with you. Uh, if you are not able to f afford a mortgage and you are, are not able to get, uh, you remove your condition, you're going to be held liable for the deposit that you're given. And then if the, if the market condition changes and the seller end up selling someone else for less money, they can sue you. So you create a problem. So that's why the down payment is very important to make sure you have that money, not at the time of signing the agreement of offer, but the time, few days before closing, because the bank wants to see at least two weeks before closing that the down payment should be in your account. There are some bank, they, uh, they are demanding that you should show the deposit of the money not only the money, but also carrying the mortgage for a few months in your account for 90 days or more. Because they want to see that you already have a consistent income and you are not uh, doing the, the mortgage or putting an agreement of uh, sale and you don't have a down payment and they'll be suspicious about how did you get the money. If you get the money from a parents, it's a gift money. If it's a gift money, that's okay, but they certify it. They have to give affidavit. But if this money is borrowed, then it's become a liability. So these are the why it's very important for you to have that doubt payment figured out how they, they're going to do that. Now, should you have a money more than the down payment? Of course. You're going to have a down payment. You're going to deposit. Deposit is part of the purchase price. Then you have a down payment. That is what to get the mortgage. But you still have a closing cost. You have to pay on top of that. A closing cost, other than Toronto, is approximately 2% of the purchase price. So you have to make sure that you have. Let's assume that uh, uh, if you are putting... 5% down, that's the bottom, you will be paying the highest in, in insurance rate to the CMEC. But if you put 10%, it, a little better. Also, there are government programs, we're going to talk about those when you're a first-time buyer. But this is very important 
that more money you give, the less money you have to pay for the, uh, for the mortgage. So now, uh, how to save money? How you save money? The, when you have an income, you create a family budget, and you said, okay, I have this much money, this is our income, these are expenses, and you put aside a deposit every paycheck. That is your saving. That is your contingency saving because you want to buy a house. Right now you're paying a rent, you're paying utilities, you school fee, food, transportation, home insurance, blah, blah, blah. So at the end of the day, every month you are saving $500, $1,000, depends on your income. That $1,000 is not touch. But remember, remember that the, the prices of the market of changing so rapidly that your saving will not make much of a difference. So that means you need to expedite your saving process. If the price, an average price, is going for a detached home, is gone from uh, a, a detached home, 1.459 million in, in, in 905 and 1.785 million in, in Toronto, 416 area, Imagine that this is an increase of 19.3% average price from last October to this October. So no matter what saving you do, you, you still have to expedite the saving process. Okay, so you may have to cut down some travel. You may have to cut down your lifestyle. You may have to cut down uh, too much activities, buying spree, you're going on a shopping mall, spending a lot of money. But the most important thing that people have thought about is putting a shelter on, on the head of the family. So this is the most expensive financial decision you have to make to buy a property, especially first-time home buyer. We were fortunate. We have recently a buyer that we bought a property. They were expecting to buy something for 750, now 800, end up buying for 960, 960,000. A town home, a good site, nicely done. So this is why it's very, very important to, and they were able, they had the income to support it, so they got the mortgage directly from the bank. Sometimes you'll end up buying, borrowing money from a B lender or buying, borrowing money to close a deal, get a, a second mortgage. No, no, no. This is going to cost you more money unless you have an income to support, support your extra loan to close the deal. Because once you have made a commitment to sign a buyer represent, uh, agreement of purchase and sale, you are bound and you're committed and you can be sued if you don't execute your contract in a timely manner. You can always talk to your listing agent and the, uh, if you're represented by the buyer, buyer can talk to your agent to make sure there's a compromise, there's a clause in the contract to allow you to close a little bit later. But in terms of down payment, you got to come up with the down payment. So if you don't have that um, uh, to avoid, if you have student debts, you have other uh, debts that that that's going to cause you a problem because all those debts through institution or or le lenders or the banks, it's going to show up on your credit report. So whether you tell your mortgage agent or broker or not, or the lender, the bank, they will accumulate that. They will already know that. They will pull the report, credit report on you from Equifax and the TransUnion, they have the facts. So they will tell you how much down payment you have to pay. And this is why know your product. When you're dealing with a broker, and if he's a qualified broker, he can teach you to make sure that you understand your liability because you may have a need for medical help, extra expense, care for seniors, or other clothing, student loans, or supporting your ch children, education program. So you have multiple liabilities and that going to restrict your ability to buy, uh, put a more down payment. So this is why it is very important. Now, there is a, if there, there is a government program, uh, it, it, trusts, um, uh, it trusts high trust saving account or register RSP. So you can take advantage of those program where government will let you save the money and you pay less taxes and then you can draw money against from RSP or TSSA 
to get uh, this um, uh, loan so you can buy the property. Cut your expenses is the most important thing. Saving isn't uh, something that it happens immediately. You have to plan it. You have to cut the expenses. You look at this, where your money is coming, where the money is going, and how can you help to reduce those expenses to save money. For example, I turn off lights very quickly when I'm leaving the room. I make sure I use the energy efficiency thermostat. This is a, uh, in, 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 the, in the house. So it adjusts when anybody leaves the home, automatically it turns into a, a regular. Before I come to the house, it, it uh, turns on uh, half an hour before the temperature is consistent, but it's burning, so it's saving effort. So Nest is the one of the control panel that you can use, 300 bucks from the Home Depot and install yourself, and you start saving electricity in your house. Thermostat, furnace, heat, and cold both, it works with that. So, so basically, you stop shopping, stop shopping on Amazon, everything that you want to buy, or shopping gift, other things that you do, too many trips, too many parties. So you start saving money. So you, got, you are able to make sure you put, increase your saving and you can uh, put down. And you also need to track your expenses. This is why it's very important to track your expenses to make sure what you have said you're going to be saving and this is how you're doing it, then you're going over budget and you bring down those expenses so you start saving. Make sure if you want to buy a house based on your income, if you can save annually $50,000, then you know that you're going you're gonna to need at least two years to save that money. Maybe you're living on one income and you're supporting the other income, but you have to save money. If you say, I'm going to cut down my expenses, but then you don't do it, don't track it, then it's going to be a problem. So what are the bigger expenses that you have, what you do? You know, the biggest expensive a person or a family has is a car payment or a rent. These are the big expenses. So you have to negotiate. You don't have to have a fancy, big, 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 big house unless you can afford it. But if you're a first time, you can try to contain yourself by living in a smaller place so you're able to save money. Rent has gone way up. You know, if you go to uh, my episode I have shared with you, we're going to share some information as well. The rent has gone up, and this is why. So you need to find out if you are able to increase income by working extra hours or working overtime or working a second job. It all depends on individuals, their own capability and how they can sustain and save money. It is not about earning the money. It is about saving the money. And we have tendency of making the money but not controlling and tracking our expenses, then we end up spending them a lot more. And that is the reason that we're talking about. Invest your money. So you should take the money and you can go to RSP or your TFSA account or other investment. I think exam market dealer is one of them. You can go invest in a private capital market. I'm also licensed uh, um, dealer rapid access capital uh, advisors. And uh, if you ever need any investment opportunity, give me a call. So it's important that you are going to um, put the money investment. As you can see, lots of people invest in the stock market and other industry. And look at what happened to the real estate. This 2021, 19% increase in our last October to this, this October. 19.3% average price increase through Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. Imagine that. How much increase did you get in a paycheck? 1%, 2%, 3% on a year period? House price is gone 19.3% average. This is why it's important to save money, get your first house as soon as possible. There are first time home buyer program. And I will mention to you, if you go to city pro dot at my website and look for the buying tips and you click there there is a topic the government program for buyers i'm going to name you few but you can go to my website city pro dot net and look for 
buying tips underneath that, when you click on buying tips, it will give you a schedule of various topics, and you click on the government program for home buyers. So government program for home buyers, CMAC purchase plus improvement. You can purchase a house, and you can get some extra money to improve the property if you qualify. So you have to reach out to CMAC on that, or through the realtor or through the, your more principal broker like me, I, you can reach out to me, 416-451-3489, uh, I can tell you that. Then he say, RSP home buyer's plan. You can draw RSP to pay down the payment. And there is a threshold that you can use to, uh, to apply it. 5% down payment program with CMAC. You put 5% down. There is also equity sharing program with CMAC. If you put 5% down, CMAC can put 5% down. And then it's 10%, but they will share 5% equity. You don't have to pay them back, but you will pay them, pay them back when you sell it, sell the property. Unless you have a 25 years mortgage and you don't sell it, then you don't have to pay back. But the moment you sell it, let's say five years from today, then you have to pay back that loan that you borrowed plus 5% of the profit. So this is a program available for CMAC. Of course, HST uh, new housing rebate program that is available, and the, all builders, when you buy a property from the builders, uh, you will, uh, the builder will built in HST included. It doesn't tell you what that means. When you go to the lawyer, you have to sign a, a disclosure that this house is as a principal residence, and I'm going to occupy it. If you don't do that, you can end up paying $24 thousand dollars more in addition to the purchase price as a, as, as a down payment or toward the down payment because the builder was expecting that money coming from CRA and you decided to, you want to use an investment property. So you buy it, you pay it, and then you file, it, you rent the property, and then, then you can claim a reclaim from a CRA. There is the input tax credit, you can call it, and there is a process to how to go to, the, go to CRA. Uh, Canada.ca, and you can find that information. Land transfer tax rebate program. As you know, the land transfer tax, there was a, a rebate, uh, about $4,000. Uh, it may have increased a little bit more. I'm going to see land transfer tax. It was uh, 4000 before. It may change. And um, this is why it's important uh, for a first-time buyer to get four four thousand dollars for transaction, if you buy a property from from Toronto, if uh, it will be doubling it. So you have to check that out uh, with your lawyer. Uh, how much would that be? But I think it's a four thousand first time. If you are a one buyer and you have a, another buyer with you and he has already or she has already bought something, you may only get two thousand because his ownership belong it depends on the ownership. So now, first-time incentive, uh, you already have uh, mentioned to you uh, that uh, first-time incentive. Uh, the program, uh, you can also apply to a program is called uh, Eligible Canadian uh, $5,000 Non-Refundable Income Tax Credit uh, for the year your home purchase, saving up to seven or fifty thousand federal tax. So let's say if you have bought a home and you can claim $500,000 non-refundable income tax credit, so you can save about $750 in taxes. So home buyer's plan, and this is RSP, it can allow up to uh, $35,000 from RSP tax-free to put towards your down payment. That's the money you can use toward down payment. Remember, and each partner will draw $35,000. So let's say you have two member wife and husband or partners, each one can draw 35000 from the RSP and use as down payment. So his wife and husband, that's a $70,000 tax-free you can use as a down payment if you have that saving account. So put your skills to work. So it's very important for you to understand this complexity involved. The down payment is very important. If you don't have a down payment, you cannot close a deal. You will have a contract a commitment that you sign with the seller, but
but you can't close the deal. This happened to one of our listing uh, clients, a seller client, and I'll tell you, it was three years after litigation, they, he allowed the forfeit the deposit. So down payment is important because that is what the lender needs it. Lender want to see that money in your account to show that you are ready to take on the, on the closing. Otherwise, you will cause problem for the buyer and seller. Both, because both will be defaulting. One is defaulting, the other guy's property is not sold, and they are in trouble, and they're going to uh, be complaining about it, and you have litigation issues, and challenges, claim, and all, also big, big, big issues. So it's how important it is to save money, cut down expenses, big item, take a smaller house rental, don't buy a fancy car if you don't have a house live with a used car, recently car, insurance, your expenses, travel expenses, cut down a big item and make sure you are saving more money for putting down for deposit. We're going to take a short break. Uh, you are watching Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz and Tame. We'll come back to you after the short break. पूरे ऑन्टेरियो में लाखों लोग अपनी कोविड-19 की वैक्सीन हासिल कर चुके हैं। हेल्थ कनाडा की मंजूरशुदा तमाम वैक्सीन्स मेफूज और हॉस्पिटलों, डॉक्टर्स के दफातर, फार्मेसीज और आवामी वैक्सीनेशन के मुखामात पर हासिल हैं। अपना किरदार अदा करें, अपनी वैक्सीन हासिल करें। 300 जुबानों में मदद के लिए जहां जिंदगी की सहूलत मयसर हो जो आपको बुलंदियों पर ले जाए तो मिली रियल स्टेट मार्केट के एक्सपीरियंस रियल स्टेट प्रोफेशनल अमित ओदराय से GTA में रियल कॉल करें अमित ओदराय 6 कॉल करें अमित 6402918102 अमित ओदराय ब्यूटीफुल होम्स यू कैन अफोर्ड सो नाउ इट्स फुली रेनोवेटेड लाइफ केटरिंग बारबेक्यू तंदूर Jalebiya Fresh Naan Takhreeb Aapke Ghar Me Ho Ya Ghar Se Bahar Zok Is Providing Full Service Now And Zok Has Opened A New Banquet Hall Garden Even Center Aapka Zok Take Kar Loog Kehenge Kya Zok Hai Aapka Call Right Now 905-625-7786 Zok Zok Walon Ke Liye डिक्सी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स और अप्लायंसेस पिछले 16 सालों से खरीदारों की खिदमत कर रहे हैं हम लगातार 4 सालों से खरीदारों की पहली पसंद बने रहने का अवार्ड हासिल कर चुके हैं हम किचनर्स बॉश वर्लपूल एलजी सैमसंग और जनरल इलेक्ट्रिक के ऑथराइज्ड डीलर हैं 5 स्टार खिदमत का लुत्फ लें हम आप सभी को सीवी सबसे ज्यादा रियायती दामों पर देने की गारंटी देते हैं www.dixieelectronics.ca हमारी वेबसाइट पर जाएं या अभी कॉल करें 905-625-5900 सभी बहुत ही मुनासिब तेमत पर दस्तियाब हैं जो आप बा आसानी से ले सकते हैं At Dixie, we sell quality and deliver confidence देखिए खेल की आवाज हर पीर शाम साथ बजे आज की बात समीना जबीन के साथ हर मंगल रात 8 बजे इस्लाम इन मॉडर्न टाइम हर मंगल और जुमा शाम 6 बजे कैनेडियन मोजे हर बुध रात 8 बजे रियलिटी कॉफी टॉक हर जुमे रात शाम 7 बजे टुनाइट टॉक हर जुमा शाम 7 बजे देखिए तकरा, कीजिए तकरा, समीना जबीन के साथ हर रोज रात 9 बजे और रिपीट सुबह 9 बजे आप देख रहे हैं आवाज इंटरटेनमेंट आवाज आपकी चैनल हमारा जुड़िए हमसे गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू रियलिटी कॉफी टॉक ऑन आवाज इंटरटेनमेंट माय नेम इज ताहिर आई क्रैशी आई एम आई एम योर होस्ट आई एम अ रियल एस्टेट ब्रोकर ऑफ रैकर फैसिलिटी प्रो रियलिटी इंक प्रोक्रेज we were talking about importance of down payment, so I re-emphasize that to make sure you cut down major expenses, you start saving money, and make sure that you have money in the account minimum of two weeks before 
closing to so make sure your condition from the lender is cleared and instructions are given 10 days before closing to the lawyer who's closing the deal. If you fail to provide the down payment to close the deal, you will be on the hook for not only forfeiting your deposit that you did, but also liability to if, if the seller resell the property and encounters any losses and you can be held responsible for that. Depending on the value, litigation or through negotiation, it, it will be costly. So please make sure that you arrange the down payment, not only down payment, but also other closing costs that you need to close the deal. We're going to talk about some general complaints that went to Real Estate Council of Ontario. Real Estate Council of Ontario is a regulator appointed by the government of Ontario to, to prepare or implement education program for real estate professional, registration program for real estate professional, compliance program for real estate professional, and, and, home, uh, and consumer protection program. So once a license is issued and a person is working with a, a, a brokerage or self-employee as a so sole proprietor as a broker record or partnership or broker record or brokerage with the various employees were reportable to complying officer as a broker record. I'm a complying officer on, be, for, uh, for on behalf of City Pro Realty Inc. Uh, to make sure that everybody implement REBA and nobody infringes the REBA agreement. This is the law. This is the law. Real Estate Bro Business Broker Act. That is the Bible of real estate in the province of Ontario. So I'm going to share with you small, small things that consumer complained and then those were resolved by RICO, Real Estate Council, and they were settled. These are resolved issues. That means there were no disciplinary action, but they were resolved. So I'm going to say a buyer, a, summary, a, a, a seller agent and buyer agent. The, a buyer representative attended the property 15 minutes earlier than the scheduled time. The buyer representative apologized for the error. See, if you have set up an appointment and they come early and they try to force in, that, that is wrong because we are in a COVID. We are re getting out for COVID. Recently, I showed a property to a client and my agent was with me. She said, okay, why don't we, we go in? I said, no, we're going to call the listing agent. We call the listing agent. They say, oh, yeah, they're going to have another one that has a block in there. As we finish the conversation, last five minutes of the appointment, this broker uh, agent showed up. So I told him, you have five minutes to get out from there because my time starts after that. So this agent apologized uh, for his error. So this is why, why to do it? If you want to know, the courtesy is to call your listing brokerage and ask them if you can go early unless overlapping someone. Because of COVID, we want to take action. So avoid that. Second thing is, there is a landlord complaining against seller representative, which is his, his or her own agent. The seller representative entered the rental unit and posted pictures of the tenant's personal belonging without their permission. Okay? So he went there, he was going to list the property, and he took the picture of the, the tenant, his personal belonging. The case went uh, before the land, landlord and tenant board. A landlord was found at fault and had to compensate the tenant. So whatever settlement was there, if his property is rented, and I always tell my client when I go to the property, please do not take any picture. Unless in your agreement it says that the buyer seller is giving consent to take the picture if it's a, a house not tenanted. If it's tenanted, you need to have a consent of the tenant to take a picture because there's a personal belonging. So the seller representative removed the photos and agreed to pay the landlord for the cost incurred at the tribunal because it went to a tribunal because tribunal is a landlord and tenant board. So they went through the process, probably cost him $1,000 to take those pictures without permission. 
So consent of the consumer is very important. So the other one is a seller completing a buyer seller representative. So the seller reduced the price of the property because the seller representative promised to pay for a fence. So here you go. You listed a property, price is there, then the seller, the seller say, I'll put the fence for you, let's reduce the price, okay? And the seller purchased the property through another brokerage. So he bought, a, instead of buying from the same agent, he bought another one. The seller representative refused to honor the promise to pay for the fence. So basically, there are, it appears that you have a buyer representation agreement, you have a listing agreement, but they are totally independent. Selling and buying, they are totally independent unless they are linked inside the agreement. So seller who was agent representative, he sold the property, but the seller went ahead and bought a property from other brokerage. Maybe he did not enter into a BRA. So then the agent refused to sell it. He complained. The seller representative made the payment as promised. So he ended up paying for it. So make sure when you make a commitment to a, a, a client, a consumer, that you're going to do this and that, it has to be in writing. Otherwise, you can assume and then uh, cause a problem. Here is again a seller and seller representative. That means listing agent. The, the, prop, the subject property had a tenant. A, a property has a tenant. The seller agent did not give the tenant advance notice to prior to showing the appointments. As a result, the seller was fined $1,500 by the landlord tenant board. Oh, gosh. You see, in, if you remember that in our, when we are listing on MLS, we say we need 24 hour notice because it requires that we should give 24 hour notice. So the, the tenant complained to the landlord and tenant board, and then the seller was fined $1,500. The seller represented agreed to cover the cost of the fines, so at the end, the agent who represented the seller paid for it. If you are renting a, a property and you're not going to make $1,500 unless, uh, you know, it's a high value rental. So you end up paying back the money that you earn. So why to do that? Be careful about it. Do Be cautious. Be Think about it. I always recommend friends to go to Code of the Ethic. This is a book regulation. This is the Business Broker Act. This will give you code of ethics that you need to you need to master these, because this is why it's very very important to refresh. You have a Real Estate Business Broker Act, Ontario Regulation 58005, Code of Ethics. This is why it's very very important to 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 uh, to to study these clauses and what are your obligation. There are um, uh, one to 53 chapters. I think every real estate professional should read this very often. This is the page. You must read it. It talks about different issues. I'm going to have a special presentation for, for you on, on this particular subject. So here's another one, interesting one. Buyer complaining against buyer and seller representative. So buyer is complaining against buyer and seller representative. The seller representative advertised that the property had deed water access. The seller representative advertised that the property had deed water access. In fact, the water access is public. That means anybody can go in and go there. It was not deeded. The buyer agent also failed to confirm this detail in the listing. So when he saw that listing statement that this is deeded and he should have checked that to make sure that this is the case or not. Because if it's deeded, it will be a red parcel of land. You can have a, 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 a you can buy a report from Geo Warehouse, land registry. It will show all the deeds, everything that is there. And is very important for you. A Geo Warehouse. 
So resp respondent compensated the buyer for the error. So they end up paying $3,000. I'm sure they'll be paying $15, $15 each for one listing agent not verifying it, and the buyer is also not doing the due diligence. Under Section 21 of REBA Section Code of, Code of Conduct, it says, material fact is our obligation and fiduciary duty to protect our client to verify this information. If you don't do that, you're going to be in trouble. And this is why they end up paying uh, probably $1,500 each. Here is a seller complaining against broker of record. The broker record represented the buyer and seller, so it's a multiple representation. Broker record is representing the buyer and seller. The broker record failed to obtain the details of rent arrangement agreement for the water softener. If you remember, if you go to the basement, you will see a close to water tank, a water softener, maybe two canisters on the side. These are water softeners. They're around about, depending on the quality, 4400 to 4000 4, to $5,000. And you make sure you check it out. Is it owned or is rented? And then you know how much. And listing agent has to disclose that and buyer has to, buyer agent has to verify and inquire about it. So after the trade closed, the deal closed, the buyer received invoices for water softener, refused to pay, and threatened seller with a lawsuit. So now this real broker of record is representing the buyer and seller. He said, I'm not going to pay this. He's going to sue the seller and also, obviously, the agent and the brokerage. So the seller paid for the water softener unit and requested reimbursement from the broker of records. So what he did is instead of paying the monthly thing, he buy out the softener. Then he asked the broker of record to, to pay for it. The broker of record agreed to reimburse the, the complainant for the cost of the water softener. So at the end, the broker of record ended up paying for it. So question I have for you is, my friend, why don't you check it from the day one? Why do you make a mistake that you have to end up? Those water softeners are not cheap. It all depends type of the size of the house. It could be one or two or three, and maybe very complex water purification system. So this is why it's very, very important for real estate professionals to pay attention to the details and make sure that you are doing your part. So now we're gonna be talking about one rental, last one. Tenant complained about landlord representative. Landlord representative advertised the commercial space offered for lease as a turnkey business. Landlord representative advertised the commercial space offered for a lease as a turnkey business. The current tenant wanted to ensure that the potential future tenants understood that his business was not offered as part of the lease. His business, not a part of the lease. The land agreement, the, the landlord representative removed the term from the listing and ensured that all interested parties were made aware that the current tenant's business was not included in the case. So this is very important. And also when you are working with a real estate professional as a, as a consumer buying and selling, you are working as a team with your representative. As a real estate professional, I'm a broker of record and fellow of real estate of Canada. I'm a CIPS certified international property specialist. We work as a team. We are part of the seller or buyer's team. We work together, strategize it, and we give you ideas, give you up-to-date information, help you navigate through the process. We're part of the team. So if I advise you or a professional advise you, do certain things based on our skill set, knowledge, and experience, then we owe it to them, our client, a responsibility. If we made an honest error, we take responsibility for it. If that will happen, you end up paying for it. Why to go through the complaint process? Why don't you accept your error and correct it and compensate your client? My name is Tahir Aikurashi. I'm a fellow of Rose Issue of Canada and host of Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment. If you are watching Realty Coffee Talk 
and you are viewer of Awaz Entertainment in Canada around the world, and you wish to advertise on our show, <clears throat> you have a special program. If you have a video, the 30 second video, you can advertise. I have negotiated a very special deal with our, uh, our managing director, Samina Jabin. She is the founder and managing director. She will give you a special discount, $500 to advertise 10 times a day so for 30 days on, on, uh, across Canada, uh, around the globe, on Awaz Entertainment. And please take advantage of that. If you are a broker, you are a real estate broker, mortgage broker, a lawyer, a maintenance engineering firm, builder, renovator, lawyers, accountants, any painter, plumber, anyone who's involved with real estate, you call 416-786-9809 and ask for Samina Jameen. Make a reference to Realty Coffee Talk that you are a viewer of Realty Coffee Talk to take advantage of the special discount. In normal case, you will be paying $1,000. But this will give you a special discount because you're watching uh, Realty Coffee Talk on Awaz Entertainment. Look, I look forward to see you on next time. If you have any comment, please feel free to comment and visit Awaz Entertainment, like the, our Facebook page, YouTube page, and also realtycoffeetalk.com, subscribe YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next Thursday at 7 p.m. on Awaz Entertainment in Canada, around the world. May God bless you all. May God bless Canada. Thank you.